Well, it's time for Worth the Press. Uh, as always, we bring you up to speed with what's making the rounds on the different pages of a national dailies, to be very precise, the front pages. We have Tunde Kola Wale, a legal practitioner, who joins us via phone this morning to be part of the show. Tunde Kola Wale, it's good to have you join us. All right, then we're hoping that we have uh, established that connection, clear connection with Tunde Kalawale. But we'll start off with the Nation newspaper this morning. Uh, boldly written on the Nation, it says, tension in state over PDP APC governorship primaries. That's very interesting. I think that as we progress to 2023, there might just be a lot. Underneath you have Rivers, Abia, Enugu, Taraba, Benway, Cross River, Akwaibom, Ogun, Delta, Kaduna, Kano, a battleground. Ruling party takes turn tomorrow with 145 aspirant. And what all of that means. And also you find inflation pushes up interest rated 13.5%. I mean from 11.5%. Uh, it would just be, uh, it would constitute the crux of our conversation as we proceed. Another header says big wigs win more PDP Senate tickets. Away from that, uh, Jam remitted 27.2 billion naira in five years, says uh, the registrar. And government to settle varsity poly teachers and pay with 34 billion naira. Uh, these are the headlines this morning on the Nation newspaper. Let's uh, turn attention now to the punch uh, with interesting headlines led by this. APC governorship tickets aggrieved aspirants seek direct primary alleged governor's hijacked delegates list. Aggrieved aspirants seek direct primary alleged governor's hijack delegates list. Buhari, following writers to that headline, Buhari meets governor's NAS leadership and party adjusts timetable for fourth time. Abiodo in closed door meeting with Adamu, Akinlade, others right party leaders. And uh, the pictures in the front, front, front page of that paper of uh, the EFCC's um, break-in to the home of Rochester Sokorcha. You can see that as we just uh, talked about off a course in a trending segment. And uh, this is what the paper says. EFCC breaks into Okorcha's Abuja residence, arrests ex-governor after seven hour siege. Of course, try to get uh, the thoughts of our guest who is a lawyer and aptly so for this, uh, uh, this issue. Abu Hari backed Oshibajo on Daura's removal. VP, not a religious bigot, as alleged. Daljulo uh, Man, LCCI, uh, others kick as CBN raises lending rate to 13%. Jonathan meets Buhari's nephew, Maman Daura, amid presidential bid. Interesting. 51 million phone owners lack NIN barred from making calls according to a report and details of which you can find on page 20 of the punch ncdc experts warn as lassa fever kills 152 court orders mc luomo lagos nurtw to stop levying drivers it's quite interesting and landmark if you ask me court orders mc luomo lagos that's talking about the state and nurtw to stop levying drivers. ECOWAS awards 20 million Naira damages against federal government of a businessman's death in EFCC custody. Aspirants hopeful as PDP holds governorship primaries today. My mother-in-law lost a daughter last year, wife of sound engineer killed in Lekki. My mother-in-law lost a daughter last year, really sad. And finally, Lagos teacher flogs pupil over homework victim vomits dies quite 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 sad there's the headlines coming on the front page of the punch away from the punch the leadership is uh, before us this morning and he says as governorship primaries kicks off 300 apc pdp aspirants beg delegates for party tickets uh, you, you just begin to ask yourself hmm, how interesting that would really look and underneath adc abgar SDP, NNPP, PRP, others in consultation over selection process. 
outgoing governor and last minute push for anointed contestants. Aspirant cage delegates and hotels stop them from making calls. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't help but laugh, but I mean, it just shows, you know, how the interest. And then if you need to ask all of these questions, what's really, really, really the reason why you went, you want to become, uh, you know, the, the senator representing your constituency, state house of assembly member, or even becoming a governor of your state or the president? Why? Why? What's the reason? But I'm sure that... Uh, it's a question that they would have to answer. Governors meet on local government financial autonomy today. <laughs> First time in three years, CBN raises interest rate to 13% from 11%. You also have another header this morning on the leadership saying, terrorists kill 57 as bandits give ultimatum on train passengers. Bala Mohammed poised to upstage Atiku, Ayum, and Taraki orders. It's uh, about the primaries. EFCC evades Okrocha's Abuja house for jumping bail, as was making the rounds this morning. And Navy celebrates 66 years of securing Nigeria's maritime sector. Uh, the headlines on the leadership. Let's move on from the leadership to the Nigerian uh, Tribune with these headlines. A big one there, killing, with a kicker killing of pregnant women, four children in Anambra. Killing of pregnant women, four children in Anambra. Can Arewa groups say things are getting out of hand? Can Arewa groups say things are getting out of hand? And the following writers to that uh, headline, Boko Haram kills over 60 farmers in Bonu. Bandits kill 12 in Katsina community. Terrorists forced 25,000 maize farmers out of farm killed 1,454 in Katsina, as according to the Maize Farmers Association. There's page, uh, details of this on page, pages 2 and 27 of the Nigerian Tribune. Of course, talking about killing of a pregnant woman, some uh, persons, especially those of Northern Extraction, saying, hey, tell us that she's a Northern woman. Don't just say she's a woman, because if she was... Um, uh, uh, killed in the north and maybe from the south of Christian, you would have said uh, Christian woman. You know, but these are the things that people are talking about uh, in reaction to the headlines from these some of these papers. Um, we go on with more. Uh, governors meet today. A court ruling on local government autonomy or financial autonomy may top agenda. EFCC shots, shoots, fires tear gas and breaks doors to arrest Okorocha. EFCC shoots, fires tear gas breaks doors to arrest Okorosha. CBN raises interest rate to 13% from 11.5%. Uh, AFDB commits to invest $25 billion for energy adaptation in Africa. Uh, court orders MC Olomo others to stop collecting union levies. Renewed cult clash claims another two in Abeokuta. And uh, you have 11, 811 delegates to pick PDP's presidential candidate. 811 delegates to pick PDP's presidential candidates. The following writers to that headline, Dino loses to Yusuf as Moro, Ikbazu, Galadima, Keita, Ishaku, Ibori's daughter, others win PDP senatorial tickets. Of course, the senatorial primary is holding uh, after the House of Representatives in the House of Assembly primaries of the party held uh, on Sunday. It's time to bring our guest in on the conversation this morning. Uh, Tunde, Kol Tunde Kolawole is a legal practitioner and he joins us via phone. Tunde Kolawole, good morning to you and thank you very much for good your time. Morning, morning. All right. Thanks for having me. Good morning to you. We, we were uh, having a, a tete a tete with you off the air before we came on the air and uh, asked for your thoughts on the the drama and the episode that transpired at uh, the Maitama Abuja residence of uh, Rochas Okorocha, Senator Rochas Okorocha, former governor of Imo State. This is the same place where he had held a meeting and addressed the press, held a press conference um, with, along with uh, fellow presidential aspirants from the southeastern part of the country um, who are members of the All Progressives Congress. Um, so we start with the almighty question, 
Wale Olani Peku SEN counsel to Rochas Okrocha says that no warrant of arrest was presented at the house by the EFCC or the police. Uh, they are not aware of any order of court. Nada was a letter of invitation also presented by these agents of government. Does the EFCC have the arrest, the, pow the powers rather, to arrest you know, a, a suspect without a warrant of arrest or an order of court? Well, um, taking cognizance of uh, the antecedent of somebody like a Polo Chap and also the antecedent of the EFCC as an organization, uh, it might be difficult to just say straight away or be able to ascertain what transpired between these two people. But the truth of the matter is that uh, under our law, it is after you have concluded your investigation that you invite a suspect to your office for the conclusion of the investigation, or even possible arena in court. But sometimes you find out when the EFCC invites especially the politically exposed people, they hardly want to honor such invitations. They think they are too quick to honor the invitation. Furthermore, like I was talking about antecedent, the EFCC has this day has been behaving in a very gestapo manner. You will recollect they've gone to Lekki and some of these other places to start breaking to the homes of even Nollywood uh, actors and actresses without a warrant of arrest. They go to hotels, to raise the hotels and arrest people in there without a warrant of arrest. Ordinarily, the year is supposed to, to procure a warrant of arrest from the court of competent jurisdiction before they go in there to start arresting people. Besides that, they ought to have completed their investigation to a very, very convenient point. And the service or 80% of the investigation with regard to suspects must have been completed before you go to effect arrest. Because you are not expected to keep the arrested person in your custody beyond 24 hours or at most 48 hours if there is a court within the, 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 the environment where the suspect could be arranged. But you see, they would always like to make very loud statements. They want to make very loud statements, according to them, and to send the right signal to whoever, all the other people, they have invited us that they may want to arrest, that uh, they have this almighty power to do whatever they want with whoever it is suspected to have engaged in money laundering. It is right, wrong. It is not right. And even putting in court in the hands of suspects who did not receive arrest are not permissible under our laws. But this is Nigeria, the AFCC, and then the DSS, uh, and all that. They think that they are above the law and that uh, nobody could call them to order. Sadly, the minister, the national security advisor, the DG of DSS, and Mr. President, to whom these people are responsible. They never call them to order. You remember the circumstances in which a man who is now AIG of police was arrested. Here is the security mindset that he could have invited to the office and then he fetched his arrest very quietly. But in order to embarrass the man and also make loud noise in the media, he engaged in this gestapo behavior. It is wrong to effect arrest okay. without a warrant to that effect. All right, uh, uh, Barrister, Barrister, uh, before we move on, um, it's important yeah. that the public gets the right information. That's why we have you here. Um, uh, a federal high court, uh, Justice Ibrahim Buba of a federal high court sitting in Lagos in 2016 had said that the, uh, this is a case involving uh, the former DG of Nimasa, uh, the former Niger Delta militant Tompolo and some others uh, over yes. the conspiracy, alleged conspiracy and diversion of over 34 billion naira. Um, uh, yes. He had made a statement 
um, you know, before the Defense and Prosecution Council, Prosecution, Prosecution Council being um, uh, Fessus Kayamo at the time. Uh, he said that the EFCC um, can, does not need, uh, he said that the EFCC can arrest anybody that is alleged to, he ruled actually, that the EFCC can arrest anybody that is alleged to have committed an offense without a court order. Yes, that, that, that is true. That's what I'm saying. It depends on the circumstances. If, for example, uh, a man or a citizen is committing an offense and you suspect that if he don't detect his arrest immediately, he is likely to abscond, he is likely to run away, or he may com commit more damaging offense, then the law permits you to arrest that person without an arrest. Furthermore, if the, uh, the crime that is allegedly committed is not just a misdemeanor, no, I mean, it's a very big of offense, uh, which you call felony or what have you. The EFCC may proceed to arrest without uh, uh, obtaining um, a warrant of arrest. Even you as a not many citizen, the law allows you to effect arrest for somebody who is suspected to have committed a crime without any warrant of arrest. All that you require to do is immediately effect the arrest, hand him over to any of the security agencies that is nearby. But you see, the, the, the truth of the matter is that is the ESG doing this because the quota is likely to run away? Is the ESG doing this because they suspect that quota will commit even more grievous offense if they don't detect his arrest at that period of time? Is it impossible for the ESG to behave in a very civil manner in the discharge of his responsibility? For God's sake, we are in a democracy. And I think that the report is about that all security agencies, all Nigeria must respect citizens and human dignity. Section 35. You don't respect human dignity when you go out and barrack in the public. When you could be quietly and politely decide to do whatever job you want to do. Breaking into people's homes or breaking into where people are holding meetings for press conferences, the man who will look in is a violation of the dignity of, uh, of, uh, of these people, which they now find are a to torture, both mental and physical torture, which they have to torture at their friends uh, very seriously again. Why they may have the power to arrest without a warrant of arrest, it is with a caveat. Uh, um Tunde Kolawale, we, we need to move away from this now. Um, that's because we're really running out of time, and so we're able to touch other critical issues. But we're hoping that we get to a point where, uh, you know, impunity would not become the order of the day, especially for security agencies. Now, the APC governorship ticket on the punch. You have a grief aspirant seek direct primary and allege governor's hijack uh, delegate lists. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, looking at this current situation. I'm not surprised if you look at what has been happening since the return to civil rule in 1999. What you have read is what has always been happening. Some powerful people, some rich people, some very influential people, even outside the party hierarchy. We go to our neck of this, bright, and pay for all the form. And it is from these people that whoever wants to contest will now go and obtain the form. And if they don't like your case, if they think they will not allow you to contest, the form will not be made available to you. Uh, Chief Lamidi Adesu was a very notorious for that. I know of so many people who will come to his home or to his house in uh, Manete and say, you, you have done this good to me before. Take this form, you are going to have our You take this form, you are going to the General Assembly. You, you will go to the Senate. Have the money to do that. Why the uh, INEC gives the whole form for the whole state for one individual? This is my imagination. When there are procedures that should be followed, not just by INEC, but also the party, and also the aspiring candidate. So, 
It's a monetized uh, policy. Uh, our policy is like a bazaar. Those who have things from, those who contest, and those who run for election, it's meant for the highest bidder. I'm not surprised. But what is surprising is that uh, 20, 22 years after this civil rule, nothing seems to be improving. And the security agency, the police, the CSS, the civil defense and war have they have been turning a blind eye to all this infraction that takes place this time when we are running an election in Nigeria. All right. Uh, uh, let, let, let's... Uh Go to this headline on the front page of the Punch newspaper, Court Orders MC Olomo. Uh, this is a former head of the NURTW um, and battled. He had to pull out and um, he was also removed as well. Uh, orders MC Olomo, Lagos and the NURTW to stop levying drivers. This is, uh, uh, sir, the Ikoi Federal High Court um, with this particular order. Um, okay. Yes, yes. And MC Olomo now, having left the NURTW is now he had been given a, 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 an, a the exalted office by the governor of Lagos State, uh, Samolu, of chairman of Lagos State Parks and Garages Management. Um, so this, this is an interesting ruling. What are your thoughts on this? Um, this order was filed in respect to an ex parte application filed by a lawyer, Mr. Olukoya uh, Ogumbeje. Okay, Ogumbeje. Yes, yes, sir. Mm. That's a very progressive lawyer. Well, let me say quickly. You will recall, I think it was last year, a premium time, did the research as to get the money that the National Union of Road Transport Workers, the other uh, organization, I think, they are called Road, uh, road uh, Transport Workers, you know, something. You know, there are two prominent um, unions in the transport uh, sector. And of course, too, you have the Okada and Market uh, uh, Riders uh, Associations and what have they. The same time, this is an expose in which it concluded that in Lagos State alone, the Sanford you know, were getting as much as 250 billion naira per annum. And that, that money was enough to fund the budget of uh, six states in Nigeria. And those states were mentioned. And you ask yourself, why would the government at the federal level and at the state level close its eyes and turn a blind eye to that kind of good source of money going to some private pockets? Your answer is as good as mine. We use it to empower these people, and these people also use it to fund their election and also whatever dirty campaign. They might want to carry out against political opponents and also the adversaries who are not politicians. So then, as to the legal parts and what have you, that is an illegal organization. The House of Assembly in legal state has. Tunde Kolawale, can you still hear us? Well, we seem to have a disconnection uh, with um, Tunde Kolawale. As soon as we're able to have him back, we probably might just continue with it. But uh, next on the line would have been the conversation where you have Wiki dissolving cabinet and Sachs, uh, chief of staff and aides. Uh, so what happens just a few more days before you have, uh, you know, the 2023 elections? Or, all right, it's good to have you join us back, Tunde Kolawale. Hello, hello, Mark. Yes, we can hear you very well. Yeah. But let's That's share your thoughts. Let's share your thoughts. Let's move away from that quickly on the punch. All right. It talks about right. Wiki dissolving cabinet and tax chief of staff and aid. What do you make of all of this, and how much more time <laughs> do you think that he has before? Uh, Mister Wiki has been behaving like a bull in the China we are shop. and for somebody of start to be the president of the tech. All right, so um, well, we're hoping that we uh, have that connection. And um, as soon as we do, we'll definitely hear Tunde Kolawale, you know, talk about it. But, you know, the news making the rounds is the fact that you have the governor of River State, Yasun Wike, has sacked his 
members of his cabinet, chief of staff, and, you know, the aides, and everyone's asking, looking at administration and looking at governance, um, how do you, I mean, how much more time do you have on the table to have new persons come on board? And how do you achieve all that you're expected to achieve just before 2023? But some people have said that this actually happened for political reasons and probably because of the fact that he's declared his intention uh, to become president of Nigeria. Uh, Kofi, I know that, you know, a little bit of closeness to Wiki or probably have experience, <laughs> not necessarily. If he's watching, uh, I've got to say, I know you, you've not called me. <laughs> uh, not in that light, but no, no, no. Uh, knowing I, I, that you I, I, lived, I, I, I lived in Riverstate. I in Riverstate uh, yeah. for some years, uh, he, he knows me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was on radio and he felt my impact. But um, uh, uh, Wiki sacked his entire cabinet Totally unexpected, but I'm sure if you unexpected, yes, I mean you don't you don't hear of these, you don't expect these things, but I'm sure. Um, I mean you don't you don't wake up in the morning expecting that the governor would sack his entire cabinet, everyone, you know, before the expiration of their their tenor. You know, you come into office if you have a four year span as governor, you know, you might relieve one or two, you know, commissioners, you know, maybe three or four, like when he fired. My, my friend, the former commissioner for environment, after we, we held week, I say week because I was part of those organizing it, um, a press conference to talk about the suit, uh, the air pollution, the poor air quality in, in River State caused by uh, um, illegal crude oil refining. refining. Yes, yes. Um, whilst we were at that, <laughs> at that press conference, you know, because it was a partnership between the um, civil society, the media, and the River State government through the commissioner. Whilst we are at that, that, uh, that, that press conference, the commissioner, who was the headline you know, uh, uh, person for that, the star of the show, was supposed to address the press and make a statement, um, started touching his phone. He, he, he would bend over under the high table, like, because I was emceeing that event. And then he now tapped me, said, Kofi, you have to go to government house. Governor is calling me. Oh, we're being told that we have yeah, uh, right. Tunde I'll, I'll finish the story later. No, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so Tunde Kolawale, you're sorry about the, the, the network issues, but uh, we're glad to have you back. You were making a point uh, before the network interrupted you. So please go on. Thank you. Yeah, I was saying that um, Mr. Wiki has been behaving like a bull in a China we are sure. And now for somebody who... As far as to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, better behaviors are expected uh, of him. He has always been very loud and rancorous within his party, with uh, no clear cut objectives as regards what he really wants. When you also look at um, his balance sheet in terms of achievement, for the seven years he has been uh, governor, I'm not too sure there's anything tangible as such to show for it. He's not been paying pensioners. He has not been paying salary regularly. Still, he goes all over the country, donating funds to different people and different organizations solely because of his own political objectives. You also recollect not too long ago, one, is one of his political adversaries, an outstanding governorship candidate was accused of uh, engaging in courtism when the man went to obtain the form to contest the governorship family of his party. He was arrested and he said, Wike, Governor Wike, was behind his ordeal. The intention of that is uh, to frustrate the man from contesting the governorship in the primaries of the PDP in River State. And we say, for God's sake, all these kind of behaviors are unacceptable in a democracy and in a different society. You also recollect that a uh, wicked took on the MBA, which is his family consequence. Took them on not too long ago, saying that they are only good in issuing press releases and that they never engage in any affirmative action. Thank God, the, M the, the MBA was able to shut uh, his mouth for him. Hmm? And they asked him to concentrate on his responsibilities as a governor to the people of uh, River State and not start behaving as a quartermaster 
So as a kind of enforcer over the Nigerian policy and the PDC as a political party. Hmm. All right, all right. Interesting times, um, uh, you know, for for River State. But um, we have on the front page of uh, leadership um, some attention being given uh, to Nicola Wale to the uh, issue of uh, financial autonomy for local governments in the country. Of course, a court ruling. Uh, uh, you know, in favor of the National Financial Intelligence Unit and the federal government. We hear, according to leadership, that the governors uh, to meet today regarding this issue. What are your thoughts on this? Are you there, sir? All right. Uh, uh, we apologize. Um, Tunde Kolole has uh, been done by the network would get back to him as soon as we can. Um, but, but mercy, um, let me complete my story. So while we're at that press conference, the commissioner of environment left. Someone brought his phone to me and said, see your Facebook, Nemdomsak commissioner. So at that press conference he was meant to address, he went to government's house and governor told him he has been fired and that he should return every, all the property belonging to him to, to government house. So I don't know whether he even drove home with the government car he was using, but that's, that's some of the drama we see with here some weekend uh, with the River State government. You know, but people have said, you know what, as a governor, he, he appointed these commissioners. Um, they were not elected. He brought them in. He can decide when he wants them to go. So everybody has been told to go, all the commissioners, and then the uh, secretary, you know, the chief of staff to the government, uh, Emeka Woke, and then the senior special assistant on protocol. But there is a bit of a rumor. There's a rumor has it that um, the commissioners uh, carried themselves to his house. You know, he has his own private residence, a sprawling estate, um, bigger than some government houses in, we call it the new government house in Port Harcourt on Ada George Road. A rumor has it that some commissioners carried themselves to his house to go celebrate with his wife. Um, who's a very wonderful lady, just like the governor, wonderful and intelligent. They're both lawyers. She's a judge. And that uh, this rumor, it's not established. The governor hasn't said anything, but some people are claiming on social media that he wasn't happy that they, um, they came to lobby in his house. He has previously warned that any commissioner or special assistant who dabbles into politics of 2023, who becomes the next I, I, governor. I remember, yeah, I remember that he will, he will that conversation. Them. So yeah. I don't know if it's true. The, some of the reports are flying around. We can't tell. But it may not be unconnected to that visit. I don't know if it's true. You know, and, and also the fact that the senior specialist is on, on protocol was relieved. Why protocol? He's not the only senior special assistant. He's not a commissioner. So why was he relieved? We don't know. We don't know. Some also say, no, he went to COBJ regarding his 2023 uh, presidential as aspirations. And uh, he went with um, Samuel Otom, governor of Benway State. He went with uh, Donald Duke, former governor of Cross River State, and also Governor Shei Makinde. And they're saying that OBJ told him, Wiki and all of them, to go and support P2B. And that um, they weren't happy. So out of anger, when he got back home, <laughs> he just fired everybody. <laughs> but we don't know if that is true. But one thing, yeah. that, you, one thing you, that you have mentioned in the course of all of this is that, you know, it wasn't expected. No one would actually see that that would happen. But, you know, with uh, the governor of River State here some week, a lot of persons have actually described him as, you know, they would liken him to the former president of the United States, Donald, oh, Trump, Donald Trump. Oh, so he's Donald Trump of, of Nigeria. Exactly. I'm sure he'll, so, he'll be happy um, to hear that. You know, <laughs> very yeah. erratic. Yeah. I mean, some people are not surprised at that action because the thing that he does, uh, you know, he has a capacity to act in that way. I mean, he has a tendency. The mm -hmm. characteristics are there, and so it's not. But whatever it is, it's, it's in the rumors. Uh, it's still in the speculative. Spe realm of speculation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it yeah. might just also have some element of truth if you look you're, at so you're good his with behavior <laughs> and pattern <laughs> over time. Uh, well, that's the much we can take this morning on Off the Press. We do appreciate your time. And thank you so much to Nicola Wale for being part of um, Off the Press. We look forward to having you next week on the show. Thank you so much. We'll definitely return. But just before um, we come back with the major conversation this morning, on the show about monkey parks. Let's tell you what happened today in history.